If you use the finest NVMe SSD for gaming, loading screens will be completed so quickly that you'll wonder why you didn't get rid of your old hard drive sooner. A dependable NVMe SSD makes using your PC daily much simpler, from fast booting into Windows to quickly launching large open-world games like Saints Row. The greatest and most economical PC upgrade you can make is an NVMe SSD, second only to a GPU. Just consider how having some of the top NVMe SSDs inside the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 has helped them. Soon, our systems will be equipped with the direct storage technology that makes the most of the Xbox's capacity. This indicates that storage is going to become even more crucial for gaming PCs. The SSD market's fierce competition is its best feature. These quick drives are frequently discounted and offered at amazing prices, especially 1TB NVMe SSDs, which sell for around $120. Buying an NVMe SSD should be simple as long as your motherboard supports an M.2 slot. Well, in this video we'll break down the top 5 best NVMe SSD in 2022. The products mentioned in this video are in no exact order so be sure to stay tuned till the end, therefore, you don't miss anything. WD Black SN850 Currently, the fastest PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD you can purchase is the WD Black SN851 TB drive. There is nothing that can compare to it when it comes to real-world benchmarking, even though it may not win every test in every benchmark. Don't get me wrong, it performs admirably across the synthetic benchmarks, topping many of them, but there are a few areas where the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus or the Samsung 980 Pro have the advantage. Nonetheless, in the grand scheme of things, this does not change the fact that this is currently the best storage available. Performance is what ultimately distinguishes an SSD from the competition, and the WD SN850 excels in this area. Peak sequential read rates of 6,750 megabytes per second and 5,920 megabytes per second, respectively, indicate that this is very much a second-generation PCI 4.0 drive, according to simulated benchmarks led by Addo and ASSSD. Although less than the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus, writes at either side of 5 gigabytes per second are still healthy. This is also reversed by the 4K write performance of ASSSD, with the WD SN850 outperforming the Sabrent drive. The SN850 outperforms the competition in PC Mark 10's quick and full storage tests, which are where the real-world performance testing shine. This drive keeps running in regular use thanks to its overall throughput of roughly 495 megabytes per second in the quick test and 550 megabytes per second in the full benchmark. This performance is replicated in the Final Fantasy XIV test, where the SN850 loads the five separate sceneries for the first time in a little under 7 seconds. That shows how much of a difference the most recent technology can make in terms of game performance when many fast SSDs still take 12 seconds to finish the same operation. The SN850 expands spans on Western Digital's earlier SSDs to surpass them all and become the performance drive you need for your gaming PC. Given that the Samsung 980 Pro costs the same as the SN850 yet trails the newer drive in every parameter, it is left out in the cold. This is especially true given that it held the advantage for a short while. Both drives are excellent, of course, but if we had to choose just one next-generation SSD right now, it would be the WD SN850. Simply said, it's the best drive money can buy right now. WD Black SN770 Recently, there have been some amazing NVMe SSD releases, but they've tended to be expensive and focused on top-end performance. The WD Black SN770 defies this pattern and, like its predecessor, the SN750, focuses more on providing superior value than pure performance. Being an SSD drive without DRUM is the major factor in how it accomplishes this. It can be surprising how little effect this has on a performance given advancements in the most recent controllers, yet this saves a significant portion of the manufacturer's bill of materials. Don't get me wrong, these drives are slower, but the new SN770 still claims read and write speeds of 5150 megabytes per second and 4900 megabytes per second, respectively. This 1 terabyte edition of the drive has a single NAND flash module at the back and the SanDisk controller facing the connector. 
Western Digital rarely provides detailed information regarding its controllers, and this instance is no exception. There are four capacities of the SN770, 250GB, 500GB, 1TB, and 2TB. Regrettably, there is no 4TB option. The Sabred Rocket options, which go all the way up to 8TB, are what you should go for if you want a truly large drive. The SN770 falls behind more expensive drives in the simulated performance, although the writes are much closer. It is clear from the 4K performance that the SN770 has much to offer in this crowded market. Given that Samsung's drumless drive is a PCIe 3.0 drive, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise that this drive performs better, but the degree to which it does so is astonishing. It's important to keep in mind that this drive, like the SN850, can become hot when pushed. After a full day of testing, it, re it reached 76 degrees Celsius, but that was without any kind of direct cooling, not even a heatsink. In most systems, it should be alright, especially if your motherboard has a cooling system. The SN770 especially shines in tests that mimic real-world conditions. In most day-to-day -day tasks, it would be difficult to detect the difference between this drive and considerably speedier options. This drive currently costs less, therefore that counts for a lot. The SN850 is undoubtedly the superior drive if you require higher performance, but you will spend a lot more on it. The main issue with this drive is that we are unsure of the exact speed requirements for Microsoft's direct storage. The SN770 performs at 5000 MB per second in our tests, which is where several developers have set their sights. Therefore, it ought to be good, and given the price, it's quite alluring. However, if you're a dedicated gated gamer, we'd advise moving up a level or two in the product stack to get that WD Black SN850. Seagate Firecuda 530 The arrival of Seagate's Firecuda 530 series of PCIe 4.0 NVMe drives has been eagerly anticipated. And we can proudly say that Seagate should now be included among the list of producers of top-tier SSDs. The Seagate Firecuda 530 is at least on par with every SSD now available. The Seagate Firecuda 532TB is an M.2 drive with a 2280. It combines a Fison PS5018E18 controller with brand new Micron 176-layer TLC NAND. Micron asserts that its 176L TLC NAND, which has a 30% reduced die size and a 35% reduction in read and write latency compared to its 96L NAND predecessor, is the finest in the industry. The 7306,900 megabytes per second sequential read and write speed of the 2 terabytes Firecuda 530 exceeds the capabilities of a PCI 4.0x4 interface. The smaller 1 terabyte and 500 gigabytes drives are rated for 7306,000 megabytes per second and 7000 and 3000 megabytes per second, respectively, while the larger 4 terabytes disk offers the same rating for consumers looking at the other capacities. Seagate must deliver, and it does, if it wants to sell a drive that is more expensive than the popular SN850 and 980 Pro. The most recent Fison E18 drives often perform exceptionally well in sequential read and write activities but fall short in random performance, notably random read tasks and IOPS, which are crucial for gaming performance. With the exception of the PC Mark 10 storage tests, the Firecuda 530 either matches or outperforms the industry leaders in storage. When you factor in its top sequential performance and durability rating, the Seagate 530 is at least on pace with any consumer SSD now available. Throughout the testing, we keep track of the temperatures, noting the peaks. A knock to a fan is placed over the region to keep things cool while the drive is left to operate naked. Even though the 2TB Firecuda 530's maximum temperature of 71C makes it a somewhat hot drive, we never saw any throttling during our extensive testing. However, to keep things under control, you'll either need decent ventilation or a powerful motherboard heatsink. As a significant participant in the storage sector, I imagine Seagate struggled with whether to delay the release of its greatest SSDs until it could introduce 176L NAND and grab all the attention. The choice, in my opinion, was wholly worthwhile. Excellent random read and write performance is combined with class-leading sequential performance and a superb endurance rating.
All in all, this puts the Seagate Firecuda 530 ahead of the competition. You might use it as a scratch disk for massive data sets that need to be transferred frequently, a wonderful C drive, or it could store a sizable gaming library. You are welcome to pound it with any workload. Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus The new Fison E18 controller is used for the first time by the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus drive. This is the replacement for the incredibly well-liked Fison E16 controller that can be found in virtually every first-generation PCIe 4.0 drive. No, really, you'll find that controller in a lot of Sabrent drives as well as the Corsair MP600, Gigabyte Aorus, Adlink S90, and others. With sequential throughput of up to 7,100 megabytes per second reads and 6,600 megabytes per second writes, the new Fison E18 controller dramatically raises the bar. These numbers aren't far off from the maximum speeds that PCIe 4.0 is capable of, which are 8 gigabytes per second for both. It is, in essence, exceedingly quick and, at least on paper, the fastest drive yet to be launched. The newest drive from Sabrent makes an almost effortless impression, particularly when it comes to synthetic, synthetic throughput. Although both benchmarks sequential read and write numbers are good, it is the right performance that really shines out, leaving the competition in the dust. Particularly, the Samsung 980 Pro finds it difficult to keep up with the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. This simulated throughput doesn't necessarily translate to the real world, as we've seen with past drives, and this is partially the case here. While copying 30 gigabytes of files takes only 2 minutes and 16 seconds, it is competitively fast. However, the PC Mark 10 storage tests are a little less competitive, with the Sabrent trailing the Samsung 980 Pro and the WD Black SN850 in both the full and quick benchmarks. Even while it took longer than the WD Black SN850, the Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers benchmark loaded the levels in just over 7 and a half seconds, significantly faster than the first generation drives. Without a doubt, this is certainly a fast drive, but the performance that the class leading simulated read and write speeds promised doesn't quite live up to the hype. Although it's not far behind the competition and your own usage scenarios may put it ahead, it can only claim fifth place for general gaming. Kingston Fury Renegade It would be simple to dismiss the Kingston Fury Renegade SSD as simply another Fison E18 base drive with a silly moniker, but doing so would prevent you from taking advantage of one of the flat-out fastest PCI 4.0 SSDs on the market. The Renegade produces impressive stats. Additionally, it offers a lengthy guarantee, great write endurance ratings, and runs cool. But the cost of all that goodness is high. 8-channel controller Fizen's PS5018 E18 was manufactured using TSMC's 12 nanometers technology. It has a total of 5 CPU cores, 2 of which have exclusive Fison designs and 3 of which are based on generic ARM Cortex R5 IP. Fison asserts that the E18 can produce speeds of 7.4 GB per second for read and 7 GB per second for write operations, in addition to 1 million IOPS. The E18 was formerly categorized as an NVMe 1.4 chip, but Kingston states that the Fury Renegade supports NVMe 2.0. We think Kingston's 176-layer 3D TLC chips are the same ones used in the KC3000 sister drive. You are therefore staring at a drive that is entirely current. Obviously, with the introduction of Intel's Alder Lake CPUs, the PCIe 5.0 standard is theoretically here. However, it will be some time before PCI 5.0 drives and systems become commonplace and compatible SSDs become widely available. We doubt you would be able to distinguish it from the rest of the high-performance PCIe Gen 4 crop in terms of the subjective computing experience. This indicates that price and the overall package are the main differentiators. Because of the drive's exceptional write endurance rating and moderate operating temperatures, we have confidence in its long-term dependability. The value for money argument is even less compelling. At $425 at the time of review, this is one of the most costly PCIe Gen for SSDs available right now. You can get the Samsung 980 Pro, WD Black SN850, and Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus for a lot less money. Therefore, even if this is unquestionably good, we find it a little difficult to justify the Kingston Fury Renegade at such a high price. 
So if you guys like this video or this video helped you, please give the video a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to keep up to date on the latest and greatest tech. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.